Pam, you can see my screen. I can see them from my end, Daktari. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm James Kanyange. I'm the director in charge of health products and technologies in Makueni County. I have a short presentation on the Makueni experience on this area of uh, financing health products and technologies. Uh, of course, as a county, now that we have been lucky to have the same government regime for the past 10 years or almost 10 years now. So I think for me, we cannot talk of uh, financing health products in the public sector without having to look at all the other investment areas in, in, in uh, the health sector. And so I choose to look at it from a health systems approach, whereby these are like many small moving parts of the same uh, system wheel. And that uh, if you do not make sure that they move in synchrony, then it means that you will have uh, challenges in attaining your outputs and from the health policy is that the outputs are improving access to health care services, uh, quality health care services and demand as well. So I think these are the investment areas that we have to look into to ensure that uh, we can sustainably uh, talk of financing health crisis and, and technologies. Uh, because for me, I look at it in two dimensions. Uh, healthcare financing, you are either increasing the fiscal space or expanding the fiscal space, or you're improving efficiency so that you are able to do more with the resources that you already have. So for Makwene County, uh, in the area of health leadership and governance, is that we have a substantive directorate of HPTs that, among other things, coordinates and advises the accounting officer on matters pertaining HPTs. And this has really improved uh, resource allocation and utilization in the area of HPTs uh, since uh, devolution. We also have an active county medicines and therapeutics committee which helps to bring on board all technical uh, persons that will have an impact in management and utilization of HPTs. These are also replicated in uh, the lower level facilities and uh, specifically the hospitals. We also recently uh, with the guidance of the ministry, established a county and microbial stewardship interagency committee, which as per the national action plan on antimicrobial resistance, is supposed to use the One Health approach to bring on board all county departments that are handling uh, health related uh, matters and specifically the Department of uh, Health, Agriculture and Livestock and Environment. So that is what we have done uh, in the area of health leadership and governance. Uh, for healthcare financing, uh, I think as a county, we are known for our UHC model, which we christened Makwene Care and uh, it has really helped us to increase access to healthcare services by reducing uh, out of pocket expenditures uh, by the clients. So this really, because the world today is looking at uh, UHC as a big agenda, not even in for Kenya uh, as a country, 
is a good uh, mechanism to ensure sustainability of um, health investments. We have also attracted various development partners and we are really grateful to them uh, that have helped us in uh, widening uh, our resource basket so that we can uh, deliver healthcare services sustainably. Uh, we recently established a pharmacy reforming fund at the County River Hospital, uh, specifically for oncology and renal patients. Uh, I think I'm happy that when I joined the conference, someone was presenting on NHIF, I think in Baringo. So for Makweni County River Hospital, we came up with uh, an approach of uh, using the NHIF uh, subscriptions by the patients to establish a revolving fund, which uh, as a county, we funded or we gave them seed fund to start off uh, to purchase the initial stock, stocks of oncology and uh, renal products. And then from there, uh, as per the NHIF rates, uh, after disbursements, the hospital uh, would be making up to 1 million in, in, in um, a, so to speak, in, in profit, uh, comparing what they have uh, used and what they will be getting from NHIF. Maybe the, the challenge with the, this um, program, the challenge that, that uh, has been faced so far, is that uh, NHIF disbursements most of the time do not just come uh, in time. So that, that, that is the challenge that has been faced, but uh, so far so good. I think it, it was a, a good idea. Uh, I think we as a county uh, are lucky uh, to have uh, a leadership that really considers the area of HPTs uh, as a key area in healthcare service delivery. And so we have uh, been able to get a steady budget allocation. Uh, we even have a bad budget line for health commodity audits in uh, all the facilities, uh, just to ensure that there's accountability and uh, to stem wastage. Uh, for the same reasons, we have uh, made timely payments of uh, our debts, uh, especially with our main suppliers, Kems and Meds, and um, we're in very good books with them. And so anytime that we place an order, we do not get uh, you know, delays in trying to follow up on what happened to the other uh, supply that was delivered. Uh, our hospitals, or uh, from the recurrent funds that they get, uh, we, we fund our hospitals uh, some monies to run uh, their facilities. Uh, they also, of course, receive some monies from the Linda Mama program. Uh, they are able to replenish their stocks uh, just in case they run out of stock of some critical items before uh, maybe a county order is uh, is being delivered. So that's an area that also really helps the hospitals uh, to sustain uh, their, their, their service delivery. So in the investment area of HPTs is that uh, we are using a pool system of, of ordering whereby the health facilities and hospitals uh, will uh, quantify their needs uh, quarterly, and then uh, those needs are aggregated at the county level, and uh, we do one LPO to either uh, KEMSA or MEDS, and then of course uh, 
both organizations have been able to do uh, what I would, I would say maybe last mile uh, delivery to the specific uh, facilities and then invoice the county for payments. Uh, from the support that we have uh, from the county and partners, we do support provisions just to ensure that uh, we are getting accountability and uh, the products down there are secure. Uh, we also do regular capacity building of staff on uh, inventory management to ensure that uh, anybody or everybody who is handling HPTs uh, is able to, you know, follow the rule, the supply chain uh, effectively uh, without a lot of uh, gaps. Uh, on the same, we also train staff on rational drug use. Uh, and this one touches mostly the area of antibiotics so that they are able to appreciate uh, the significance of um, appropriate medicine use, uh, especially in regards to antibiotics. Uh, we have also made sure that uh, all health products are being controlled by the user departments uh, so that we do not have maybe the hospital supply chain officer controlling, for instance, lab uh, reagents. So if it's lab reagents, it is a lab person in charge who will control their, their stores uh, and their stocks as well. We have also ensured that we do timely disposal of uh, expired products uh, so that we ensure that uh, our stores are safe and uh, also to boost uh, the quality of the uh, healthcare services that are delivered uh, in, in the facilities. Uh, on the area of uh, HRH, Human Resources for Health, we have been able to train as a county or to support training of uh, various cadres that are related to HPTs. We have a pharmacoepidemiologist, we have clinical pharmacists, and we have uh, one infectious disease specialist. Uh, of course, this really boosts the quality of care that is covered. Uh, at the various facilities that they are, they, they are working from. When we began after devolution, I think we only had around two health centers that had pharmacy staff. Uh, over the years, we have been able to increase the staffing in those uh, facilities and specifically the busy health centers so that to date, all of them are pharmacy staff, and this is very important in making sure that uh, we, we, we get a quality a forecasting and quantification from those uh, health facilities so that we do not end up with the under or overstocking in the, in the facilities. We also, as I had mentioned that, do regular trainings on uh, inventory management and appropriate, appropriate medicine use. In the area of health service delivery, we have, uh, as I had mentioned, we have a, a big agenda in uh, trying to implement the National Action Plan on antimicrobial resistance. And so we use a multidisciplinary approach, which has really improved uh, appropriate medicine use. Because uh, when we try to create awareness or sensitize the clinicians so that they understand the key role that they ought to play in ensuring that uh, we use the right antibiotics for the right patient and in, in the right dosage, uh, then, you know, we are able to save on um, unnecessary usage of uh, antibiotics. We have also improved diagnostic lab capacity 
uh, to be able to undertake antimicrobial susceptibility testing, uh, which again goes a long way to reduce the uh, misuse of antibiotics. Uh, we have been able to conduct antimicrobial point prevalence surveys uh, in the County River Hospital. We also planning to expand to the other hospitals. Uh, and this one has helped, of course, to ensure that clinicians and the other stakeholders uh, really understand uh, the tenets of uh, antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, we also recently developed a surgical antimicrobial prophylaxis guidelines, uh, specifically for the county in the County River Hospital. And all these we, have, we, we did with support of our, our partner. We are really grateful. And so it really helps us in uh, ensuring that we follow clinical guidelines and that we improve the outcomes, health outcomes in, in, in uh, for our patients. In the area of health infrastructure, we did, with the support from the county, uh, construct a county store, which really helps us in ensuring that we got some buffer stocks so that when, or in the event that we run out of stocks of some items, we are able to use the bubble stocks. Maybe just in the case they are, they, 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 it is before we receive uh, the next uh, supplies. So we also prioritized as a, as a department equipping uh, the health facility stores just to boost commodity security and to ensure that uh, we streamline uh, the supply the HPT supply chain. We established a blood, blood transfusion satellite in Makwene County River Hospital. And so I think for now we would say that we do not have challenges with blood products. Uh, because previously we really used to get many challenges and we had to borrow or to go for blood for from very far areas, including um, Tajada Veta Voy, Voy Hospital, which is quite a distance and uh, a big inconvenience and, and it could really uh, result in, in, in uh, poor outcomes for patients. We got support from WHO with an incinerator, an incinerator that uh, uh, helps us in uh, destroying uh, the obsolete and, and, and expired uh, items. In the area of uh, health records and information, we don't have much to write home about. I think it's an area that uh, has some gaps. And so even though we have a semi-automated inventory management in the hospitals, we really cannot say that we are able to do any mean meaningful utilization of the same in, in terms of, uh, you know, maybe quantifying uh, the, the, the products that are used in the hospitals. We have a partner that came up with a community-based digital health platform, which links NCD patients, specifically hypertension and, and diabetes uh, with uh, care so that uh, Patients can access uh, services from a health center, but they are linked up to a, to a hospital. In the area of research and development, uh, as I had alluded up there, is that uh, with the support of a partner, we've been able to conduct a microbial point prevalence surveys in the County River Hospital. And uh, we've seen that antimicrobial prevalence uh, reduced from 45.4% in September last year 
to around 9.7% in February this year when the second PPS was conducted. And we also established that uh, use of third generation cephalosporins dropped from 38% uh, last year, September, to around 30% in Feb this year when the second PPS was conducted. This is uh, really significant for us because uh, from our budget, antibiotics consume around 25% of uh, our HPT budgets. And uh, we really had a big challenge, especially with the, the third generation uh, cephalosporins. So we see this as a, as a, as a, as a good way of uh, ensuring sustainability and resilience uh, in, in, in uh, delivery of healthcare services. So I think going forward, this is an area that we really would pride ourselves in uh, ensuring that we keep uh, conducting uh, the surveys and using this data to inform us and make policy uh, decisions. We, on the same note, are coming up with a defined daily dose for our antibiotics, again, in our county viral hospital, uh, maybe just to be able to monitor how various antibiotics are being utilized in, in the population. And this, again, will enable us to make informed uh, policy decisions, uh, and uh, we intend to roll it or to expand to the other hospitals. It has not been uh, all rosy and glossy for us. There are challenges that I think could be cross-cutting in the other counties and especially in the public sector. We, of course, at this Health Laws Amendment Act, of uh, 2019 that has restricted uh, all public entities in terms of uh, where they can procure uh, HPGs. This has been a really big challenge, and I know it's across the country, uh, given what Kemsa is going through. So you find that you try to raise orders with, with, the, with the Kemsa, and you end up getting half or less than half of what you, you you required. So I think it's an area that uh, you know needs to be addressed. I know there are various organizations that are trying to uh, bring about the, that change in, 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 the, in the policy so that we open up to other suppliers and especially uh, meds. COVID happened and uh, one of the main challenges that I have seen with COVID is the uh, abnormal rise of uh, products, especially PPEs. Maybe just to highlight is that uh, before COVID, clean gloves were going for around three shillings a pair. But then after COVID, I think the prices shot or skyrocketed to around 13 shillings a pair. That is an increment of around 400%. So it's been a challenge because, uh, you know, that eats into the visco space. Yes, there has been uh, support from other partners and donors in the area of COVID, but of course, you, it could not have gone or expanded the resource basket with around 400%. So it's been really straining, but I think so far so good that uh, things are trying to normalize now. In the public sector, we have uh, a challenge in silo mentality whereby a person implementing one program, uh, you know, most of the time do not share data with the other people. And so you may end up losing uh, critical data for planning. Uh, I had heard from the speaker that came before me about uh, the importance of automation. And uh, I think that for us is lacking and it could really help us in, um, improving efficiency in uh, the area of uh, HPT supply chain and even uh, healthcare services delivery in general. Thank you for listening.